In this video, we are going to be talking about stitching on plastic canvas and we will create this beautiful Christmas ornament together. Hi, my name is Marie and this is the Caterpillar Cross Stitch channel. If you're new here, welcome! This channel is all about cross stitching and tutorials, so remember to hit like and subscribe and hit the notification bell as well to make sure you'll never miss a tutorial from us again. Remember to also check out our other social media channels like Instagram and Facebook for even more stitcher inspiration. This video is going to be all about this cute, small 12 days of Christmas ornament that is perfect for your Christmas tree and I created it all in all with stitching in about 7 or 8 hours. I will be talking about all the tips and tricks for stitching on plastic canvas and also how to fully finish it into your very own Christmas tree ornament. I hope you enjoy it, let's get stitching! Let's talk about stitching on plastic canvas. It's one of the easiest ways of stitching a Christmas ornament. The mesh is usually 14 count, so you would stitch on it the same way as you would on 14 count Ada, with two strands of floss. But there are a couple of tips and tricks you might appreciate knowing when stitching on plastic canvas, so let's go through them. I have chosen to stitch these 12 days of Stitchmas, starting with the partridge in a pear tree. My first recommendation would be to always try to start with a loop start. Anchoring threads on plastic canvas is tricky and using the loop method start will make things a lot easier. Because plastic canvas is often a 14 count, two strands will give the perfect amount of coverage. If you can, get a thimble. Plastic canvas is a lot stiffer than fabric and can be quite hard on your fingers. So having a thimble can make it a lot easier in terms of getting the needle through the canvas and also finishing the thread behind stitches. Needle size matters. Because the plastic canvas is sturdier, using a one size smaller needle will make working the canvas easier. For example, needle size 24 is a recommended standard on 14 count canvas, but I am using needle size 26 here, which makes it easier to get the needle through the canvas. To finish the thread, you can run the needle behind the stitches. This can be a challenge on plastic canvas because the stitches can be quite tight. Get underneath as many stitches as you can and make sure you use your thimble because it's usually a bit harder to push the needle beneath stitches on plastic canvas. If you can't use a loop start method on your plastic canvas, you can bury the end of the thread by stitching over it. I am holding the thread on the back of the plastic canvas and stitching over it at least three or four stitches before I clip it. The good thing about plastic canvas is that you can see through it, so you can guide the tail easily, making sure you are stitching over it and not next to it. This method is in fact perfect for ending the thread too, to avoid hurting your fingers. I have used a washi tape here to catch the ends of the threads once I've finished stitching with them. Washi tape has a very weak glue that leaves only a little residue and is easy to remove but at the same time it does have some grip so it helps me to keep the threads out of the way of my stitching. You can also use small clips or needle minders to do the same thing. After stitching the last stitch, I am bringing the thread through to the top, at least four or five stitches away, making sure I place the tail somewhere where I will stitch over it with another thread. Once you've stitched three or four stitches over it, you can clip the tail and continue stitching as usual. 
make sure to clip the tail as close as possible to the last place it was stitched over. Otherwise, you could be bringing fluff to the top of the project when you continue stitching. Now that our project is finished, let's finish it into a Christmas ornament. We will need a piece of felt. I'm using white one, but you can use a Christmas colored piece of felt if you have it. I will also use a Christmas themed piece of fabric from a charm pack to glue on the back of the ornament. My preferred glue is Aileen's Tacky Glue I got off Amazon. It's acid free and it won't discolor your stitches because it dries clear. Lastly, I have a leftover red DMC and a golden metallic diamond DMC to make a cording. Take a good pair of all-purpose scissors and small sharp scissors for cleaning up details. Both of these should be all-purpose so that you will not be blunting your fabric or embroidery scissors. Cutting the plastic canvas is a little bit heavy duty. I just want to mention that I didn't have to leave almost any margin when stitching this. It was just out of habit. Plastic canvas doesn't fray and doesn't need any framing margin, so you can stitch much, much closer to the edge than I did right here. I have done a rough cut out because I find cutting the details easier when I work with a smaller piece of canvas. When stitching the outline, make sure to stay one row away from the stitches Otherwise, you are risking that your stitches will come undone. Remember to be very careful not to cut into your stitching by mistake. Switch over to small scissors when the large ones are not good enough to get any details right. Once the ornament is cut out, we can glue the felt and the fabric together. This could be done in advance as well to give the glue a bit of time to dry. Try and spread the glue evenly and remember the glue dries clear so there won't be any white stains on your ornament. While it's drying, let's make our cording quickly. Take approximately 50 centimeters of DMC thread. We won't need a long cording and catch it with a washi tape to your tabletop. Take the diamond DMC, cut to the same length and add it underneath the washi tape. Start twisting the strands by hand until it cannot keep straight anymore and then grab it halfway through while keeping the tension and join the ends and then let it go while holding on to the ends. The cording will do its magic and twist together to create a lovely cording for your ornament. Just make sure you keep the tension all the way until you let go, otherwise your cording could twist ahead of time and you might need to start over. Glue it on the back of your project. Don't worry about putting the glue on your stitches, as I mentioned, Previously, the glue really does dry clear. If there's any tail you don't need, cut it off before you cover it with a backing. To attach the backing, cover the back of the stitching with the glue and spread it as evenly as you can. Attach to the felt and cut a smaller piece, just a very rough shape before we let the ornament dry. I have used Wonder Clips to help the edges dry nicely together. I have left mine to set for approximately 30 minutes, so the glue wasn't set completely before I started stitching the final cut, but you can leave it overnight to let the glue set properly. Use your scissors to precision cut the edges and corners copying the plastic canvas. Make sure to avoid cutting your cording by mistake. If you want the ornament to look 
rather like a bauble, avoid cutting the corners and cut a rounded shape, connecting the corners of the plastic canvas instead. Use the small embroidery scissors to precise cut and clean off any details and voila, here's your own quick and easy Christmas ornament done. I hope you enjoyed creating this small little Christmas ornament with me. Let me know in the comments what would you stitch on your Christmas ornament? Would you do 12 days of Christmas or something else? I would love to know. Remember that there is an ongoing giveaway for a big bundle of amazing Caterpillar Cross Stitch prizes. For all the details about the giveaway, please see last week's video about the ADA project bag for more details on how to enter. Remember that the deadline to enter the competition is on Friday, November 25th, 12 midday of London time. So I really hope you're not gonna miss out. Best of luck to everybody who enters. If you'd like to create ornament exactly like this, I use the 12 days of Stitchmas PDF pattern that is available on our website, www.caterpillarcrossstitch.com. If you are not yet subscribed to our newsletter, aka VIP Stitch Club, head over to the description below and subscribe with your email address. In return, you will get a 10% discount on any purchase made in our shop, including this pattern, and a PDF with eight free patterns delivered directly to your inbox. Remember, you can also join our Facebook group with over 15,000 stitchers who share all finishes and fully finished objects, and most importantly, joy of stitching with one another. And that is it from us at Caterpillar Cross Stitch today. Thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel and see you next week.